Well, welcome to Now I Have a Ham License, Now What? I'm Jim, AF6PU, that's Alpha Foxtrot 6, Papa Uniform, and I guess I'll be your Elmer for the next few minutes. Uh, let's talk a little bit about amateur radio. What is it? What'd you get? You just got this license, and it's kind of exciting time. Well, it is an exciting time. It gives you lots of opportunities to go out and communicate in a little bit new and different ways than maybe you've been able to do before. Maybe you've been using a, a CB radio, uh, maybe communicating between Jeeps. Uh, maybe you've been using that uh, cell phones uh, where they're available. Maybe other forms of communication, I don't know. Uh, family radio, real popular. But um, amateur radio affords a, a way to communicate greater distance with greater clarity and, uh, and uh, really have a lot more fun with your friends doing it. Plus, it opens up a whole new world in and of itself. It is a, it is a fantastic hobby as well as it, it accents and accentuates other hobbies. Uh, so let's be honest. You got your license. And you tell your friends, uh, whatever, I just got this thing. But really the fun thing is that you get to go out and go buy some gear. But what gear do you buy? What kind of radio do you get? Uh, this is the fun part. It's probably more fun trying to figure out what radio to get and, 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 and doing all this uh, than it is you know, after you get it. Maybe the fun even wears off. I don't know. It doesn't for me, but it be made for you. But... Um, uh, there's lots of options. Let's talk about that. Well, you have uh, what we call HTs. Uh, these are uh, handy talkies. These are also known as like a walkie talkie. I got a few examples here I can show you. Here is uh, an old favorite of mine. This is a, uh, a Yesu VX6 and I've changed the antenna on it to a uh, higher gain antenna. And this uh, radio is, uh, is uh, an excellent radio, very, very uh, durable. It has a metal frame. It's kind of encased in plastic, but if you open it up, the, uh, it has a, a really hard metal frame. If you drove over this with a vehicle, it would probably hold up. Screen might get a little cracked and whatnot, but this thing would probably still just operate just the same. A very durable little radio, and uh, uh, this one will get you on VHF and UHF. We'll talk a little bit about what those things are a little bit later. But this is the VX6. It's just one example. There's lots and lots of examples. Here's one. Uh, this radio uh, is the is the Wushan. Woshan, right? a lot of people will say. This comes with this the standard uh, uh, antenna that, that comes with the radio. Uh, it has a drop, comes with a drop-in charger. Uh, uh, you can program it really easily with a, uh, a programming cable. Uh, software to do that is free. It's a little more challenging to program the frequencies you want into this radio. It's not impossible, and whatever radio you pick, you ought to learn all its features and functions and be able to program it if it's, if it's at all possible. This radio it is, just a little bit more challenging. But this radio can be had for about $100. Here's another radio. It's a cute little radio. Another little uh, 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 Yesu. And uh, this is the VX3. The VX3 is really neat because you can just drop it in your pocket. Really small. I did change out the antenna. It's a little more higher gain. Not much, actually, but just slightly more higher gain antenna. I think this antenna is made by Prime. Uh, very inexpensive brand. And uh, it's really handy. Doesn't have a lot of power, not great for transmitting, but excellent for monitoring. And uh, uh, so it's handy. If you notice, it doesn't have a lot of buttons on the front, so it's harder to program. It's harder to do a lot of things with. But once you do program it and get it set, it's an excellent little radio. Um, this is another kind of radio. This is a uh, radio that's uh, in the VHF band only. It's a two meter radio, essentially. And it's. Uh, um, also has digital modes. This one specifically does DMR. Yeah. This is a Motorola radio. They call, in their parlance, they call it uh, Moto Turbo. It was a European business radio standard. Uh, a lot of you may actually work for companies that use uh, business radios, and they may actually work on, they may 
be absolutely compatible with this. You could probably take a radio home from work, program it, and put it on the hand bands. Uh, so this is a fantastic little radio. Again, it's a small head. It comes with a little belt clip, and you can throw it in a pocket. However, the downside with this radio, as good as it is, is that you can't program it from the field. There's no buttons on it, really, to, to program. Uh, so everything has to be done with special uh, proprietary software for Motorola. So I don't recommend that as your first radio or maybe even your second radio, but I have lots of radios. I don't even have even a, probably a fraction of them here today. But an HT is a good radio to have when you're outside your vehicle, when you're just in your home, when you're just uh, wandering around. It's, it's a real handy radio, walking around camp. Uh, a, uh, a uh, handy talkie, an HT, is a great radio to have. Let's kick it up a notch. Let's look at uh, uh, mobile radios. I just really have one example, but there's lots and lots of them. This is a, uh, this is a Yaesu FT8900. Now, the 8900 is, is pretty cool in that it has uh, two VFOs. What does that mean? Uh, VFO means Variable Frequency Oscillator. It has two. So this is actually like two radios in one. So I could have one set on one frequency or pair of frequencies, one set of repeaters, uh, the second one on a, on a different set, maybe a simplex uh, channel. Maybe you're running with a, a Jeep Club or something like that, and you want to talk Jeep to Jeep on, on one frequency, but you also want to monitor the local repeater on another uh, frequency, and you can do that, and this radio does that really well. This has all the buttons on the, uh, on the handy uh, microphone here, so you can, you can change frequencies, you can do all sorts of functions right here with this. Uh, so this is a real handy microphone. I, a radio. I use this radio actually in my shop. I just keep it here, and I use it as a base station radio in my shop. Well, there's other kinds of radios, too. There's also HF radios. Uh, you got the big boys. This is an Elecraft. This is a K3, an Elecraft K3. This one is for talking around the world. That's what an Elecraft K3 will do for you. This one actually has a module that will actually talk on two meters on VHF. So it's very handy that way, but it's really for HF uh, 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 transmitting and uh, receiving. Uh, it's an excellent piece of gear, and I have other doodads that go along with it that help me find frequencies of uh, stations that are transmitting. So those are things you might want to look at. Uh, one more thing, another item from Elecraft that's pretty cool. If you don't want to put get the big boy, you can get the little boy. This is a KX3. It's kind of the mini version. So it's small. It's, can fit right in your in your uh, in your rig, right into your uh, your Jeep or your off-road vehicle or your car or or a nice at home. It's great to travel with. You can actually uh, backpack and camp with this thing. It has a nice little microphone. You can talk and uh, and and simply you hook up a little doodad like this, and you can put out a a, a random long wire antenna from this and throw it up in a tree and you are on the air with this. Uh, so that's that's kind of fun. Now one thing before we go too too much further I want to encourage everybody to join or consider joining a local ham club or at least going in and visiting a local ham club. Your local ham club has lots of uh, uh, activities uh, and information to help you really get started in this hobby. This hobby is no fun when you're just doing it alone. It's more fun when you have other people along for the ride and people that, that definitely want to help you succeed. Uh, so I encourage you to join a ham club like, like the Mount Diablo Amateur Radio Club or, or eBark or Lark or, or Hark or, or uh, um, Arca or Orca or any of the of the clubs in the area. They're all fantastic and uh, uh, they'll all steer you right. But uh, you'll learn a lot about the hobby. You'll learn a lot about what you can do, what you ought to do, what you should try out. And uh, so I absolutely encourage you to, to pursue that. 
I also encourage you to attend some ham fests. Ham fests are opportunities to go and buy and trade uh, ham gear, new and used, and uh, meet with other hams from all over the region and find out what they're doing. I also invite you to, to uh, come and visit some uh, ham conventions, such as Pacificon, which happens every October. It's a local, uh, local event here in Northern California. However, it's the Pacific Divisions Convention for the ARRL. So we have people from, frankly, all over the world that attend Pacificon. It's more than just a place to buy and sell uh, uh, used and new gear. It's a place to uh, come and learn an awful lot about amateur radio. We'll have 80 to 100 forums that you can attend on any manner of subject, from the trivial to the uh, uh, most intense and, and super interesting, and, uh, and everything in between. If you're into emergency communications or you just uh, want to know about contesting or traveling to foreign countries and, and operating, whatever it is, they have something for you. Also, some of the things that maybe you might want to consider getting is a uh, yeah, good multi-meter. Uh, excellent for uh, doing all sorts of stuff. Now, if you're involved in off-roading, you should have... Uh, one, two, or three of these things in your rig at any one time anyway, uh, because that's uh, critical to your happiness. But certainly if you're going to get involved in, in kind of the world of electronics, uh, you're, you're going to want that. Also, uh, little uh, 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 connecting cables, uh, patch cords to uh, connect uh, your radio to different kinds of antenna systems. That's a good thing to do. You can also upgrade antennas, for example. You might want to, uh, uh, here's a uh, nice Comet antenna that uh, can go on to an HT, but it's, it's much higher gain. This one is, uh, is uh, uh, 3.4 dBi on uh, 2 meters. Uh, so this one uh, is better than most antennas that come with your radio, which are probably about uh, uh, no gain. So this one uh, will double the amount of power. So if your radio is a 5 watt, radio with 3 dBi, you're essentially doubling the amount of power, so now you made it a 10 watt rig ERP is what we say. So that's a good thing to do. Um, also encourage you to, to uh, uh, read uh, materials, catalogs from uh, local uh, uh, organizations that sell uh, amateur radio gear like Ham Radio Outlet. You might look at AES, you might look at uh, Universal Radio, but Ham Radio Outlet is, is local. They have a store here in Oakland. Uh, this thing is, is actually just packed with information. And if you just read this cover to cover a few times, you would learn a lot about amateur radio just from reading the catalog. Uh, I invite you to join the American Radio Relay League. They put out just for the cost of membership. Uh, is worth the price of this magazine. It's a pretty thick magazine, lots of content in it. Again, from the trivial to the uh, uh, incredibly important. And uh, you can learn a lot about amateur radio from reading this each and every month. Uh, uh, you can also get other more technical publications like QEX. And this is uh, for people that want to build fit kits and things like that. If you're a little more electronically inclined, uh, this might be a fun thing to get. If you're not and you want to be, this might be a fun thing to get. And if you really want to kick it up a notch, I invite you to uh, get yourself a, uh, a ARRL handbook. You'll find these things in all sorts of interesting places, like every commercial radio and television station will generally have one of these in their engineering department, just because they have everything you need to know to, to, to really get a station on the air and keep it there. Uh, not just amateur stations. Remember, we call it amateur station, but we have to run under the same standards that professionals run. We do have to uh, uh, make sure that we're not having spurs in our signals. Uh, you know, we're not going out of uh, band, that we're not, uh, uh, our signal isn't spreading out too wide, uh, and, and, uh, and that we're, we're doing everything correctly. We're not over-modulating. We're not doing all sorts of naughty things that we're not supposed to do. We're, that's part of why we have to get a license to do what we do. We're responsible for that. Um, but 
what can you do? I told you all this gear you can get. That's fun. But what, what can you really do with your amateur radio license? Well, you can uh, communicate with other amateurs directly. Two radios could talk to each other directly from one to the other. That's, that's fantastic. And the neat thing about amateur radio, why is it better than citizen band radio? Okay, these radios are, are say, both 5 watts. Actually, this one's 3 watts, this one's 5, So and, and on VHF. Uh, so why is that better than citizen band radio? Well, citizen's band, these are on 2 meters. Citizen's band is on 11 meters. 11 meters is a long uh, wavelength, and, and to fully get any power out of it, you need to have a longer antenna. Well, you know the size of the antenna that's on the back of your uh, vehicle. It's not really that long. It's not really representative of, of what uh, a good 11-meter uh, antenna ought to be. So you're not getting the full benefit out of that. Also, we modulates in, in, in AM, amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation is a, the, kind of the, the first phone mode, we call it, or voice mode, uh, uh, but it's not the most efficient because it has what is called a carrier. It always sends out a signal. <clears throat> so a lot of the energy is just going out really with just dead air, with nothing. But, but we have to transmit that in order to send out an AM signal. They improved that a little bit and they came up with a single sideband and some, and some uh, uh, um, uh, CB radios will do sideband. You can go up to 11 watts actually with sideband, which is kind of nice. But actually, the maximum power you can put out from a citizen band radio with AM is 4 watts. So you have an antenna which doesn't really have any gain. You're going to have some losses uh, with your feed line to it, and uh, you're only putting out 4 watts. It's, you're, just, you're just not doing all that well. Whereas with uh, uh, even these this little radio, like we pointed out, uh, it's putting out 5 watts. You have another uh, 3 dB antenna, and now you've got your ERP up to 10 watts. So you're doing already better. Plus, you're sending out in a more efficient mode that when you talk, that signal is, is, is uh, all being utilized to convey intelligence, not just a carrier signal of nothing. So that's something to consider. Uh, and you can, if you do it on a mobile rig, you might have an antenna that might have uh, 6 or 9 or 12 uh, dB of gain, and that just keeps multiplying it. So, and you might also have a mobile rig that puts out 50 watts, so you might have uh, 200 watts ERP out at the end, or more. You might have 400. So, whereas you might have considered even though it's illegal, you might have considered putting on an amplifier on your citizen bad radio, and that would be illegal. You legally could run a 50-watt radio and effectively get out several hundred watts of power ERP out the tailpipe, out that antenna, the radiating antenna. So that's those are some of the reasons why, why AM is nice. Also, it just squelches out nice. You don't hear a lot of uh, uh, noise and crackling on a, on a, on a nice uh, amateur radio. Also, the circuitry is a lot uh, more sophisticated in a modern amateur radio than most modern uh, citizen band radios, frankly. So these are, these are all reasons why it's good. <clears throat> we've been able to, uh, in, in the Diablo 4-Wheeler Jeep Club, we've been able to, uh, with a handy talkie, uh, communicate up to 30 miles with just a handy talkie. You, you just can't do that with a handy talkie of, a, of CB quality. It just, it just isn't done. Um, and, and it'd be pretty challenging to do that between two vehicles, frankly. So those are all reasons. What other things can you do? Well, you could do, uh, uh, you could, uh, besides uh, talking two radios together, you could also go through a repeater. And going through a repeater, a repeater will receive a signal and immediately retransmit that signal on a different frequency. And you listen on one frequency and you send on another frequency. And all the radios work on the same principle. And going through a repeater, we can multiply the distances that we can send to hundreds of miles, literally. We could be up in Mount Shasta and talk to somebody in Bakersfield in one, one hop through a single repeater. 
We could also link repeaters and we could talk from the Bay Area to Texas or New Mexico or to Washington State through linking repeaters. We also can uh, use touch tones, and if the repeater is hooked to the internet, we can actually go through the internet and pop up any other place in the world where another repeater may be linked to the internet. Uh, you could do that through your radio, you could do that through your computer, you could do that through your smartphone, you can uh, do that to uh, uh, talk to uh, uh, people anywhere. So, frankly, you could get on your smartphone and talk to somebody in the middle of the Rubicon Trail. And uh, whereas you know they don't have cell service, but using an application uh, uh, like Echolink on your smartphone, you could actually talk to uh, somebody in the Rubicon Trail. It's, it's pretty amazing stuff. You could do direction finding. You could find uh, uh, somebody may be lost. They don't know where they're at. They can't tell you where they're at, but you could actually home in on their signal. You could uh, work satellites. Oh, geez, look at This is a, an antenna that works good for... Uh, Satellite operation, actually, this is kind of what I make for a living, these things, and uh, they're kind of fun. Uh, this is called the Elk Antenna, but uh, this allows you to actually communicate uh, uh, perhaps 100 miles or more with a little uh, HT. So that's, uh, that's pretty slick stuff. Um, other gear you might consider getting along the way is you might consider... An antenna analyzer. These things are fantastic for tuning your antenna systems, and they work just as well for your CB radio, and they'll work for your HF radio, and they'll work for your UHF and VHF radio, depending on the models you get. But here's one from MFJ. It's kind of a, this is the higher end of, of a low end uh, brand, I would say, but it's awfully handy. You see a lot of these out in the world. This is a uh, Comet. I love this uh, uh, this one. It's it's uh, it's fantastic. Uh, you just you, it'll tell you exactly what frequency uh, you're operating on down here, and uh, and then it has a cross needles here that'll that'll tell you your ohms and your SWR of the, your uh, of your uh, uh, radiating system, your antenna system. So that's a that's a fantastic uh, analyzer. And I have another one here. There's an AEA. Which uh, gives a nice graph on a on a screen, and I also have uh, software uh, uh, analyzers, and I also have uh, 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 spectrum analyzers, uh, which allow me to see it like a like an oscilloscope, but it's it, it measures in the uh, in the uh, um, uh, frequency domain instead of the time domain, and it's uh, it's a it gives you a nice picture of exactly what's going on. If you're running a base station, you might need to get a, a power supply like this. Uh, this is a, 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 a handy little power supply. It's a Linko, a little switching power supply. Some people don't like switching power supplies, think they make too much noise. I have really not had any issues with this, uh, with this puppy at all. Um, it's been a real workhorse. It's done exactly what I've needed. Every once in a while, it'll put out a... a, a little bit of noise on a frequency. I just try to avoid that little frequency here and there. It's not bad though. It's within tolerances. Anyway, what else? So where do we operate as, uh, as technicians? Well, we operate uh, uh, on the uh, uh, VHF and UHF uh, frequencies. What is VHF? Uh, VHF frequencies will take you from 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. Okay, we generally operate, say, on two meters, and that's going to be about uh, 144, 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz. Uh, if you want to know citizen band, specifically, it's on 11 meter, and it's about 27 megahertz. So it's just below the VHF band. It's actually in the HF band. Um, if you want to know how these things compare to apples or oranges. Um, we also use uh, uh, 220. 220 is a fantastic band. It's also in the VHF. It's uh, not used as much, but it's very quiet and uh, it works really well. Not a lot of radios work on it, but a lot of Yesus, a lot of HT Yesus in particular, work on the 220 band. So um, um, I, I often use it. I use it actually almost every day in the morning. Um, 
Another band that we use is UHF. UHF is really the beginning of uh, what we'd call the, the microwave band. And it goes from 300 megahertz uh, to 3,000 megahertz or 3 gigahertz. It's another way of saying 3,000 megahertz is 3 gigahertz. So um, uh, uh, I personally do things uh, uh, between about 444 megahertz uh, and actually 427 megahertz up to uh, about 2.4, 2.5 uh, uh, megahertz in the UHF band. So I use all different uh, bits and pieces of that. I have an amateur uh, radio, uh, television station, believe it or not. I use an antenna like this. <laughs> this is called a loop yagi. It's a pretty long thing. Whoa. A loop yagi. And, uh, and you generally set it like this. And... Uh, and uh, it'll, it'll give a, a lot of gain, and uh, it works really well. This is for 1.2 gigahertz, 1,200 uh, megahertz, or in the 23 centimeter band, if you prefer. Now, if you want to run a vehicle with one antenna to do all sorts of things, oh my goodness, I don't think I can get this in the picture either. So we've got a stinger up here on the top. you got to tune up real nice here. It's got these, uh, these uh, uh, planes that come off here. You have uh, uh, all sorts of stuff. you got a coil in the bottom of this thing. I can't even show you. And this, uh, well, and this thing um, uh, does HF and UHF and VHF. So one antenna does it all. I don't know if it does any of them super well, but it does them all. If you want to have one antenna on your... On your uh, on your rig, that's what you do. Now, I want to impress upon you. I don't care if you get a thirty dollar radio or you get a uh, three thousand dollar radio. You know, whatever makes you happy, whatever that you can afford and feel comfortable with, uh, as long as you use it, that's fantastic. But it's important that you consider if it's a mobile rig and you have to, you know, put it in an antenna and feed line, you want to make sure that you, you put your money almost more towards that feed line and a good antenna system, whatever that may be. It may not cost a whole lot. It might, but it probably won't. But make sure you install it well, that you get a good ground plane to your vehicle, good ground to your, your vehicle's uh, uh, metal. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's important that you uh, uh, ground everything because an antenna isn't just the part that sticks up. That's only half of it. You need the second half, which is the ground plane. There's two parts to every antenna. Two parts to every antenna. And it's not just the part that's sticking up. You think you, your car antenna is just the thing that's sticking up. No, your whole body of the vehicle is the whole other part. And it's critical. If you don't have that, you don't have good contact there, uh, you have no antenna system. So make sure that you do that. Second thing is that when we're on the ham bands uh, of VHF and UHF, these are higher frequencies and they can have greater losses in the feed lines. The coax that you might have used for your CB radio might work, but it might also be very lossy for amateur radio use. Might be okay for HF, but it probably won't be as nearly as good for VHF and probably be really terrible uh, for, for UHF because it's lossy. The signal will get dissipated right out of that, uh, that uh, coax feed line. So you might have to upgrade that coax feed line to something that, that will work a lot better for you. So this is something to consider. So you will pay a little bit more per foot for coax, but in your vehicle you probably don't need these, these giant run lengths. I mean 10 feet would be probably a relatively long run length in a vehicle. You might get away with the six or seven feet and, and you know, it, uh, more than 12 is, is probably not super likely, depending on where you put your vehicle. Um, oh, let me show you one other thing that's kind of cool here. On this uh, mobile rig, <clears throat> you may not have a place to put this rig conveniently in your in your uh, vehicle. Well, the interesting thing is is that the front of it here can actually come off. 
I don't know if I can do it. Yeah, I can. So you can actually take off this faceplate here. Let me show you. Ta-da! You can take off this faceplate here. You can just stick this little bit whoops, onto your, uh, onto your, uh, um, uh, your, your uh, uh, dashboard or they make clips to put it onto an, uh, uh, an air vent. And, uh, and uh, then you can take this little brick here and stick it underneath a back seat or a front seat or some place that's convenient. So you can go hide it someplace as long as you get some ventilation. If you notice, there's a lot of uh, heat sinks on here. This thing is made to get uh, potentially warm, or, or hopefully it doesn't, but it's made to dissipate a lot of heat. This is a 50-watt unit. So remember, your ham radio or your CB radio is 4 watts, and it could get warm. This could get a lot warmer. It's 50 watts, so you got to think about that. Now, it is uh, FM and maybe a little bit more efficient than, than the AM. I don't know, but, but it's something you have to consider. So you do want to keep good ventilation, but you can remotely locate this someplace that's more convenient for you, and you only have to deal with this little bit where it's convenient for you. So that's a, that's a neat feature. Many mobile radios have this feature. You can find radios like this. I've seen uh, uh, Chinese versions of this for about 150 bucks and I've seen uh, really fancy fancier versions of this radio for maybe four or five hundred dollars uh, your choice uh, if this is the way you want to go there's also simpler radios you could just get a two meter rig that's super durable hardcore put it in your in your in your vehicle and you would be as happy as you could know uh, it'd be durable you're not going to break it uh, they're relatively inexpensive. I mean, just, you know, 100, 150 bucks, and you could have a bomb-proof thing. Like, I know in your, in your vehicle, you want to have a good solid winch. You want to have a good high lift. You want to have, you know, you want to be prepared for anything. So you might want to consider a more heavy-duty radio because, you know, you're not driving this vehicle up and down Highway 24 all day. It might be bouncing along the Rubicon or bouncing along the Hammers or wherever you're going. So you want to be prepared. Anyway, I think that's enough uh, chit-chat for uh, getting you started. And if you have any questions, you can contact me uh, at AF6PU, that's Alpha, Foxtrot 6, Papa Uniform, at ARRL.net. Okay, signing off. Seven threes.